Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, as I get older, one of the things I've learned is that there's some opportunities you can't take. No matter how much they're offering you, no matter how big the paycheck, right? The opportunity is going to cost you more in the long run than you get in the short term. Now, somebody's got to say it, but I got to say of all the things nutritional expert Alex Oriza has done, this move by him, to sign on with Brandon Rios's camp on the eve of Rios's fight against Manny Pacquiao has to be the worst, right? This is the kind of disloyalty that's going to raise eyebrows, not just from the people who used to be his business associates, right? Manny Pacquiao, Freddie Roach but also from third parties who don't want to do business with disloyal people, right? This, quite frankly, is outrageous. Other than his parents, I can't name anyone who has done more for Alex Ariza than Freddie Roach and Manny Pacquiao. Now, no matter how bad the breakup was. No matter who fired who, right? When Manny Pacquiao's next opponent approached you and said, come work for us, Alex, you should have turned that job down, right? I got to tell you, if I were a championship boxer, and I'm not, I'm just a hack here online, but if I were Floyd Mayweather or Bernard Hopkins or Andre Ward or you you name it, right? Name the great fighter. Miguel Vasquez, Adrian Broner. I would never hire Alex Ariza. I don't care how good he is at his job. I would never hire him because I know this guy is hopelessly, in my opinion, disloyal. Right? Hopelessly so. You know, the press might be a little bit timid in calling him out on it, but this is outrageous. You know, and it's sad, too, because we've had to hold our nose to avoid the stench of this guy's garbage now for a very long time. He's already played the card that Freddie Roach, according to Ariza, isn't physically up for the job, right? This, of course, is while championship level fighters like Miguel Cotto are hiring Freddie Roach, right? He's already stabbed Freddie Roach in the back. But this moves even worse, right? To me, this would be like Roger Mayweather suddenly popping up in the corner of Mayweather's next opponent, right? This would be like Angelo Dundee suddenly being in the corner of an Ali opponent, right? Shouldn't happen. It would be forgivable if Ariza signed on with Brandon Rios, Rios was fighting other guys, and then down the road, Rios met his former client. Okay, fine. Then at that point, we'd be able to say, okay, well, Rios is, excuse me, Ariza is part of Team Rios. But we all know what's going on here. Right? We know that Ariza's disgruntled. He got axed from Team Pacquiao. And now he wants to hurt everybody whose team he used to be on. Right? Just an advice to anyone in the business world. You don't need to do business with guys like this. I don't care what he's bringing to the table skill-wise. Right? When a guy is such an obvious Judas... Cross the street. Stay away from him. Right? Let me move to another topic. It's related. Right? Robert Garcia, Rios' trainer, 
has come out and said, hey, look, you know, we didn't hire Brandon Rios for inside information on Manny Pacquiao. Come on now. I'll just say this. Brandon Rios, Robert Garcia, they should be trying to get inside information on Manny Pacquiao. That's part of the job description. The people in a fighter's quarter are trying to crack, uh, crack the puzzle of the other fighter, right? So I have no problem with Robert Garcia trying to find out as much about Manny Pacquiao as he can. If he's hiring a former assistant, a former aide to Manny Pacquiao, I would expect him to sit down and say, hey, what can you tell me about Manny that can give my fighter Brandon Rios an edge, right? That's part of the competitive world. Right? So why BS about it in the press? Why try, <laughs> why try to spray the odor on it, cover it up and say, oh no, we're hiring Alex Ariza for his nutritional skills. This has nothing to do with his prior relationship with Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao just happens to be the guy we're fighting next. All I can say is, Let's throw a red flag on that PR spin. Give me a break. I'm guessing Alex Ariza has spilled a lot of information on Manny Pacquiao, how he runs his camp, how he prepares for fights, whatever Alex Ariza knows about his former client to his new client. And I'm sure his new client would not have hired Alex Ariza but for Alex Ariza's inside information, right? My point is simply this. Understand disloyalty has a price. Right? Understand that karma matters in life. Right? As I said, whether I work for Team Pacquiao in the past or whether I work for Team Rios, I would never hire Alex Ariza. Right? You need to know that the guys around you are loyal and are in the foxhole with you no matter how bad the breakup no matter how messed up the breakup this was the wrong move by Alex Ariza to take a job with Manny Pacquiao's very next opponent bogus let's talk about some other things Amir Khan gave an interview where he says that to beat Mayweather you've got to box Mayweather and I'll just say good for him Understand there's a big difference between Amir Khan and Robert Guerrero. Amir Khan is a lot faster, right? Foot speed and hand speed, right? So you saw Robert Guerrero have a hard time keeping up with Floyd Mayweather foot speed wise. Amir Khan wouldn't have that problem. Amir Khan as a possible opponent has options other opponents don't have, right? Because of his physical skills, right? So um, count me among those looking forward to a Khan Mayweather fight if this phone ever stops ringing and that fight ever happens. Let's talk about Dinah Davis and uh, James DeGale, right? Now I'm going to break with public opinion here in a big way. I know officially James DeGale lost to George Groves, right? I understand you got huge names at 168, including Kessler, Carl Frotch, Groves, Andre Ward, Edwin Rodriguez, right? Uh, the division's loaded. Marco Antonio Periban, um, Saki Obika. I'm just here to tell you that in my eyes, the only guy who might have a shot at beating James DeGale at 168 pounds is Andre Ward, right? I think DeGale beats everyone else. I've been here online saying it for years. I believed it then. I still believe it right now, right? I think James DeGale is a special talent. Davis is interesting, his opponent, because Davis is slick. He knows how to box. He's a stylist, 
right? This is that fight where the Gale is going to have to be on his front foot. But understand, I view the Gale the same way I view Mayweather as a switch. In other words, the Gale can beat you being passive up on the ropes or he can beat you on his front foot. This is rear talent and the Gale actually, unlike Mayweather, shifts between right-handed and left-handed, right? I think the Gale is serious competition for anybody at 168. Quite frankly, I'd be betting on him to win the fight against anyone at 168 except maybe Andre Ward. Okay, and even that fight is iffy, right? Let me uh, just say this too about Brandon Rios and Manny Pacquiao in the ring. Understand that Rios is very different than Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? Marquez sets traps. Marquez is on his back foot. Right? Marquez seemed able to lure Manny Pacquiao into walking into his punches. Right? Um, Freddie Roach was always amazed because he wanted Manny to do different things in the ring. If you read the Freddie Roach interview after the Marquez Pacquiao fight before this last fight, right, where Pacquiao wins a disputed decision, right? Freddie Roach basically said, gee, you know, Manny didn't do the things we did in the gym, right? Manny found, you know, Manny ended up fighting Marquez's fight. Now, that's not Brandon Rios. Rios isn't back foot counterpunching, setting traps. Rios is front foot lead punching, hunting you down. He's not the hunted, he's the hunter, and all I'm saying is Manny Pacquiao's style plays well against fighters like that. He wants you to try to hunt him down because Pacquiao has superior foot speed. And Pacquiao, while he's short, he shouldn't be confused with being small. Pacquiao has a huge punch. Big. He's thick. Just like we wouldn't call Mike Tyson small at heavyweight, right? Just because Mike Tyson wasn't as tall as some of the guys we fought, uh, he fought. Let's not make that mistake at 147 pounds. Just because Manny Pacquiao is shorter, like Mike Tyson, doesn't mean he's smaller. He's the bigger puncher in this fight. I think Manny Pacquiao should be able to get a KO in the fight. Two things are working against Manny Pacquiao getting a KO. And I understand Rios has never been knocked out. But two things are working against Manny Pacquiao. Right? One is the fact that Rios does have a great chin. The other is the fact that Manny Pacquiao is a gentleman in the ring, right? Certain fighters get you in trouble and then literally turn to the referee and say, you need to stop this fight or take their foot off the gas, right? Manny Pacquiao is a guy who at times has looked like he could end fights, but Pacquiao would rather just let the fight continue. Pacquiao's temperament works against him. But just understand talent-wise, and it's a high-risk fight because Manny Pacquiao's coming off of a knockout where he was knocked out. But talent-wise, in my opinion, this is Manny Pacquiao's fight to lose. I think Manny Pacquiao should be able to get a stoppage. He has a fighter who's not going to be doing Marquez-type stuff. He has a fighter who's going to be increasing the action not decreasing the action and having you walk into his punches, right? He has a guy who hasn't fought a lot at 147. Understand Pacquiao himself held the belt at 154. I understand he fought Margarito at a catch weight. The point, though, is Manny Pacquiao has been in the ring with physically much bigger men than Brandon Rios, right? And let me just say, 
the foot speed and hand speed advantage, as well as the complexity of their games. Brandon Rios comes forward predictably, right, in a straight line. Manny Pacquiao can dart around the ring. In my opinion, if Pacquiao still Pacquiao, he should force a stoppage in this fight. Right? Even with Alex Ariza giving away trade secrets to the Rios people, I don't think that Brandon Rios in one camp can come up with a way to match Manny Pacquiao's hand speed or foot speed or combinations. Right? The other thing too is Rios isn't the best defensively. And Manny Pacquiao's straight left hand is one of boxing's best punches. I like Manny Pacquiao in this one, I'll agree. There's risk, as there is in every fight, in which a fighter is coming off of a vicious knockout. And understand Manny Pacquiao against Marquez that last time around was knocked out. Let me also point out too that before the knockout, and we forget this, Manny Pacquiao so showed some slippage in that fight because he was knocked down in that last Marquez fight before being knocked out. Food for thought. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.